Welcome to Electropreneur Secrets, the electrician's podcast. We're here five days a week to help you master sales, simplify pricing, and deliver premium level service. I'm your host, Clay Newmeyer. With me, as always, my esteemed partner and co host, Joseph, the sales bot. Look, Kenny. Big wind up there. Yeah, uh, right. Today, we're talking about some really important stuff. Johnny says, wiggle your toes, Clay. It works for me talking about the warm up before we go live here. That's hilarious. <laughs> Johnny's live with us in the Facebook group, the Electrepreneur Secrets group. If guys, if you're not there getting live access with us, engaging with us, sharing your wins, any challenges or queries you have, then you're missing out. So jump in Facebook, mm -hmm. join us in the group as we're live there five days a week. Today, we're talking about some really important stuff, but we want to tie it into this is episode 50. Big congratulations. Mm -hmm. Big pat on the back to you, Joseph. Round of applause. There you go. Appreciate to you as well, brother. Thank you. Okay. Good so without you. Let's just double down on the mission here and tie it into our big topic for today, which is really service to others is the highest form of distinction. It's also the best form of discipline as well. Ooh. It's actually a really important thing that comes with it. But we're going to be diving into that as we go. All right. So the big thing for us and why we're doing this, Robert's celebrating. Woohoo. Thank you, Robert. Agreed. Thank you, Very buddy. pumped up about that. We've done about 50 episodes in, in just over 10 weeks, guys. So it's been a blur. Joseph and I can't even believe it. It was actually our, our administrative assistant who told us, hey, guys, you're coming up on 50. That's awesome. We're like, what? We're like, Wait, what? <laughs> Holy cow. This has been a blur. But why are we here? Why is this mission so important? Really, at the end of the day, I have to remember where we were to know why we need to be here now. I remember I started my business when I was 22. And really, the only people out there that were able to advise us were HVAC coaches and plumbers. That's what was available in the industry. There weren't a ton of electricians, if any. And if they were, I couldn't find them. And the biggest problem was we had to literally decode the other trades training to apply it to electric because there are so many multi-trade trainers that were like, and this applies to electric too. We don't want to be a part of that anymore. What we want to say is this is for electricians and this is by freaking electricians. We are master electricians. We've done the trade. We know what we're doing. And now we want to take the things that worked for us and teach it to the trade as an industry so that all of us, all of us electricians can finally get the spotlight again. Instead of feeling like the redheaded stepchild of the trades. It's massive, right? It's a massive movement and it's bigger than we are right now. And that's why mm -hmm. we're able to grow so quickly into this. In one of our partnering Facebook groups, the Rebs group, there's about 8,500 electrical contractors in that group. Mm -hmm. Right? In our group currently, we're under 2,000, growing very steadily, growing quickly. Uh, everyone seems to really appreciate the movement and what we're doing here. But the point is this, we've barely scratched the surface of the impact that we have intention behind. Mm -hmm. And that is to rise this tide that floats all boats. Every service electrician really needs to be influenced and have that confidence of knowing that we can serve at the highest level and that we deserve the same very respect that electricity itself gets. Why are we given anything less than that? It really blows my mind because I feel like the reason we tolerate it is because we've come to accept it. Like, oh, well, we're electricians. People don't like us. Or no, we're electricians. This is what we do. $100 an hour, two guys in the van, what you do. We yet the HVAC guys are running at $600 an hour. And yet when we go over $100, we think we're overcharging people. It's like, this shouldn't happen. It really shouldn't happen. And I'm just grateful that we can help turn the tide. Absolutely. And it's also, guys, the reason that our business, our consulting practice, the training academy that we operate, Service Loop Electrical, there's intention behind that name. And sometimes mm -hmm. guys get on calls and they'll go, Clay, I got to be honest with you. I don't leave service loops in the field, man. <laughs> and I always laugh. The double entendre of service loop, yep. what it really means by definition is that little bit extra that we leave for future serviceability. So forget the wire for a second and think about this in the law of exchange. Are you leaving every client with that little bit extra so they know where to go in the future? 
is that little bit extra, the follow up, like we talked about the other day, mm -hmm. are you the only person that stays with them in that conversation in that relationship to continue to let them know that you care about them, and that they mean something as a stakeholder to your business? Is the little bit extra the panel labeling that we also recently condoned on an episode where you go the extra mile to make sure that they understand how to use their emergency shutoffs and understand which circuits are which and they're labeled accordingly. And something we didn't touch on is the language that's on those labels suitable for a homeowner, not an electrician. Exactly. Like how many times do we simply go on those panel covers and the panel labeling and we write the legend cues like circle line line living it's like what like what what is happening how would a customer know what that is absolutely when we truly embrace this ser service loop to embrace that is you know, just a recognition that customers prospects people are on a journey and it's a journey of a negative experience typically or a new desire a new want in their life, something to improve that quality of life, right? Embracing those things, recognizing that, oh, wow, they had a problem and now they've got a dip in their life experience. They've got mm -hmm. a moment of actually being pissy about it. They didn't wake up wanting to spend today. Who's saving for their next electrical upgrade or renovation or fix? And the unexpected one at that. You're calling me for the ceiling fan. You don't have $3,000 setting aside. You don't expect this call is going to be that. But when we tell you that the, we notice that the remote is next to your bedside and that you genuinely would benefit from having a three-way or a four-way switch on both sides of the bed that control it with a dimmer, suddenly you're like, you know what? That does make sense. I would want that. I hate that freaking remote. I'm always losing. It. And now the customer has a reason to want to move forward with things. Exactly. They're, they're just people. Mm -hmm. Service is that exercise of pleasing people. Right? providing that action for them that they want faster, sooner, or they can't realize themselves. Easier sometimes. That's why they take the platinum option sometimes. And again, on a call the other day, I heard this and it was, yeah, it always makes me want to shake my head a little bit, but in that area, those people won't buy that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. In this yep. area, we always offer that because they're wealthy. That's not the way this works. It's mm. just not. So when we talk about service, hi, Guillaume's waving. Rob's got some feedback. Absolutely. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for following along. This service loop acknowledges that experience. Mm -hmm. And what happens next is research. I've never gone through this on the podcast yet, but next they're going to do research about that need, desire, or problem. Mm -hmm. Just like you do, Joseph. Just like I do. Just like anyone watching this right now. You after, figure out what you want, and they have to look into it. And after research, they're going to communicate. This is something I've said to our clients many times on the inside track. Everybody refers. It's your choice. It's our actions that lead them to refer positively, negatively, or neutral, as in they won't say your name at all. Mm -hmm. Because everyone's going to come to us and ask our opinion at some point. Forgive me in my long tangent here, but no, I'm loving so important, me. right? I agree. And it's going to lead us right into this intersection of what we're talking about today. So in that communication, in that research, finally, they'll begin to get to arrive at contractor selection, right? Mm -hmm. So you can tell this is a 3D experience. And guess what? Contractor selection isn't the climax at which everything's better and it goes, you know, just easy from there. Most times mm -hmm. they call someone who's not available, their calendar is full, or they don't answer their phone, or they don't call back. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's so unfortunately a lot of the reasons why people end up going with the more premium providers, because they become the safe bets. They're the kind of people that you're like, yeah, they're more, I know they're going to be more, but they're going to show up, they're going to do it on time, they're going to get it done, it's going to be an easy experience. All right, spend the money, we're done. 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. And finally given some fortune, uh, some good research, some good referrals, they'll arrive at someone that can actually solve their problems. Mm -hmm. But I would venture a guess and say the Pareto principle applies here too. 80% of the problems solved, needs, desires, problems being met or corrected, aren't being done so at a level of abundant exchange. 
meaning not premium service, meaning not the service loop method, leaving that little bit extra for future, quite the opposite. Quite often we find it's partial or at best a fair exchange, meaning mm. we set expectations and then we met them and we left. The end. Does Not that sound like experience. someone you want to work with again? No. And that does tie in exactly what we're going to talk about today. All right, let's jump in. Let's do it. Perfect. So one of the things that I, I know I made a Facebook post recently, and I've noticed this trend about myself, but one of the posts was we had a guy come door to door, literally just came in and knocked on doors selling solar. Now, normally the first thing you do when you have someone who goes door to door is you, you slam the door, say you're not interested. But I saw like the guy really was trying, like he didn't know what he was doing, but you could tell the intention was there. So I simply said, just give me two minutes. I went out, get a, got a pair of sunglasses and I sat down with him and I'm like, listen, I'm an electrical sales specialist. I can help you go through this. You're losing me right now. And I literally helped coach it through him enough to where he actually got an appointment. And he's like, I'll call you. I'm like, no, get me on the calendar, physically put it on the date, confirm the day before. He's like, you think that would work? I'm like, yes, I'm telling you it'll work. Just do it. And he did. And the fact is, is that honestly, I'm glad that I taught him because the fact is, is that now when he comes back, I told him to come with six options. I told him to scale up from premium to economy. And I told him to make sure that he follows up to give me the best service he can. Wouldn't we want customers like that who are like, listen, you're losing me. Can I tell you exactly what it's going to take to get me on design on the dot? Yes. I right. want to be served that way. And I would appreciate you for teaching that person to serve at the highest level, especially if I'm your neighbor. Exactly. Because now that person's going to go by and every house afterwards, he's going to provide a better level of service to them. Every single thing we do either moves the needle into the positive or into the negative. I personally think that neutral is the worst place something can possibly be. Because from a sales perspective, I can handle negative. You want to insult? You want to be rude? Sure, we can handle that in one way. You want to be super enthusiastic? Handle that another way. But neutral is hard because neutral means that you almost have no skin in the game. And no one wants to work with someone with no person. So the question comes down to is, why would we take the time out of our day to educate someone to serve us? Why is it, why is it beneficial? By the way, I want to back up just a bit with that question and say, sure. the solar guy you bought from him, right? So the thing is, is I actually have an appointment scheduled for next month for him to come out. He's, we've already had one consultation and he was going to say, I'll email you the presentation. And I was like, the fuck you won't. I was like, you're not going to do that at all. I was like, in fact, I was like, I expect you to come back and here's the thing you're supposed to do. And I literally made sure to tell him this is how you format it. This is how I want to see the choices. And every one, I want you to make sure that you could show me in this format. And he was like, why are you doing this? Literally, I, I want to be served well. I want to be taken care of. I don't want to have to stress about this and get seven other estimates. And to add to the gravity of this, the product and the offer itself are really good. That's why you're buying, right? Like they're yeah. actually great. So this person and his lack of training, it's not about necessarily calling him out, but just saying in general service is below the line right now across the board. And people sure. are just not showing up. They don't have it right. Because this guy's going mm -hmm. out there with a grand slam offer that absolutely kills it. Sounds like you make money before you ever pay them. From oh, yeah. L literally, the thing is, is that I have to put nothing down. The way that New York State is, there's so many rebates and so many incentives that it's like, I'm going to get my utility bill. My energy bill is $300 a month right now. With solar, even paying everything off, I save $180 a month. And then the utility bill never goes up. I don't see where I'm losing here. The product works, but I wanted to work with a company that I could trust. I went with that company or I'm going with that company, not because I did the research on them, mm -hmm. but because the guy went door to door and I was like, you know what? I thought this was a good idea anyway, but if we're going to work together, we're going to do it this way. Yeah. I yeah. don't want to, I don't, I don't want to get subpar service. And that means you have to educate people on how to serve you better. And now hopefully with that level of service, more people get on board for this guy. He wins exactly. and they win. And that's the win-win we talk about so often on this show with service mm -hmm. electricians. Mm -hmm. 
we're doing them a disservice when we don't serve at the highest level, when we don't have a process to do so that is consistent, producing that consistent high conversion rate, even mm -hmm. at high prices, that part is negligible. The important part is the service. Is it for mm -hmm. everyone? No. It's Some not. people are still going to make you, they're going to spin your head, almost clear off, and you'll go, what just happened? Why? I literally had that just happen yesterday. Can I touch really? on that? Yeah. Yeah. So one of one of the things I'm very proud of is that um, when I moved into the, my house, I completely renovated the basement by myself. Like I built the walls, did the framing, did the sheetrocking, the electric, the plumbing, the whole thing. I'm very proud that I handled. But I'm not a flooring guy. Couldn't do flooring. It was the one thing I, I didn't have experience doing. Hmm. So I hired someone to do the flooring. Less than a year later, the flooring is cracking. So I contact the person and I'm like, well, what is your current warranty process like? And he tried making it that, well, it's guaranteed for life, but you've got to call the manufacturer and you've got to submit the claim and you've got to do it. And then after you get it, then I'll come back and take care of it. Do you think that went over very well? No. No. Effort so literally, sacrifice, man. You can't make people do stuff. That, that old dog won't hunt, as Jim Rohn used to say. The great, late and great. You're right. But the fact is, is that by the end of it, in a very polite way, I educated him as why the warranty process, when done right, will actually make him money. Because the benefit is, is that he will then provide better service to his customers in the future. But I'm also going to get served right now. Mm -hmm. So instead of everything, he's now calling the warranty company today. He's going to be purchasing all the, all the material. And I'll be giving him a great review when I'm done. And it's going to be a win-win experience for everyone. And going forward, when he needs more support and someone else has an issue, he's not going to throw them under the bus. He's a great guy, really good guy. I like him. I'd have a beer with him if I was still drinking. But it's like, no, you can't do the wrong thing, even if you do great work. So there's something we need to uncover here. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to be honest with you. My style might be a little more abrasive. Mm -hmm. I don't get this well received, but now twice in the last month, you've actually successfully taught one of your service providers mm -hmm. better service. Correct. Talk about your transition and how you're helping people with that, because we all need to do this. It's important sure. that we pass this gift on. Like, let me ask the audience, uh, if you're listening or engaging with us live on Facebook right now, really think about it. When was the last time you left a five-star review? and a detailed um, paragraph with Perfect. that explaining why. Like that, that's a big action nowadays. And mm -hmm. I can tell you, I haven't given one for over a year and it's not because it wasn't deserved. So the thing is, I'm gonna give a little value away for here. Is that cool? Because you're gonna ask me how I transition that statement. Yeah. The thing is, it's the exact same way we like to handle objections. And the way you handle it is you acknowledge, you reframe and you represent. Hey, man, I understand what you're trying to do. I get it. You're going door to door and that can really suck. I want to let you know that I'm not a threat. In fact, I want you to succeed. And I'm the kind of guy that even would want to buy. Can I ask you a question? Would you be open to doing it a different way if I could guarantee you'd have better results and I wouldn't charge you a dime to help you get corrected? All I ask is you give me better service in return. Would you blame me or would I be wrong to want to volunteer this information to you? And almost every single time someone's like, why would you do that? No, I'm not opposed to it. And it's literally like, I want to help. Why do I want to help? One, I can't help myself. I literally cannot help myself. When I see someone struggling, my thought is to throw them a buoy. Like throw them a the library. Like, uh, listen, man, you're showing up door to door. It sucks. Anyone who's done door to door. It is so hard to do. It takes brass balls to pull off. It's hard. But the fact is, if you don't have a plan, you're screwed. But the thing is, even in that format, there are still people who have told me, no, I don't want the help. Can I touch on that for a moment? Yeah, do it. I had a situation where I think a year ago or so, um, when I first moved in, I really, the lawn was terrible. Like anyone who's done new construction, you know, they scrape all the topsoil away, you're left with the clay and they got the contractor seed and the lawn won't grow. So I literally had someone come out and I was getting quotes to completely terraform the property. 
And one of the guys came out and his first thing was to tell me, he didn't even introduce his name, didn't introduce his company, didn't have a uniform. It was just a sweatshirt, a cigarette and a pair of dirty jeans. And his first thing was, man, you called me out here for a lawn, but you don't even have a lawn. This thing looks awful. That was his first statement, not even a hello. And I literally paused him and I was like, listen, I understand you may see that. I can appreciate what you're trying to do, but can I ask you a question? Do you feel like that's the best way to get me to get interested in working with you? (laughs) Because if so, I can tell you that your process needs work and I'm willing to help you for free to get it changed. And he literally told me, no, I'm one of the best people in the entire county. I don't need more work. I'm doing just fine. And I literally was like, okay, buddy, have a great day. And he's like, do you want me to email you prices? I was like, nope, have a great day, man. That's the thing. There are some people who will refuse the advice strictly because by accepting advice, they have to acknowledge they're part of the problem. And they're not willing to be part of the problem. They're not willing to say, no, it's me. That's the difference between someone who's successful and someone who's not. When you can look at a situation and say, I am responsible for this outcome, even partially, even partially I'm responsible for this, you can now be in a position to where you can change. And only through that change will you find greater levels of success. So to wrap this up and to sum it up, what are we trying to do here? We're trying to initiate change, not only to benefit ourselves, but as a secondary action, making the lives of others better as a result. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, 100%. I love that. And the fact that you mentioned that story with the guy reminds me of something that uh, we've actually got um, slated up to be in a podcast, which is training Mm -hmm. for the slow season. Mm -hmm. Because that reflects exactly what happens when we just get busy. Yeah, it's really, really unfortunate. Because people... Not to go into a slight tangent, I'll be really short about it. Yeah. But realistically, so many contractors in the industry, we focus on slow season as like this looming doom cloud that's never our fault. It's never our fault. It's always the season, the time, the economy, the president. It doesn't matter. But no matter what, every year you're slow between November and February, but every year the reason changes. Is that, does that make sense? It shouldn't be. Because the problem is we lose by not focusing. Anyway, tangent done. No, no, Sorry. It's, it's valid. And I, I need to add one more comment to that because the odd person right now is thinking, well, I'm never slow. Mm-hmm. And we've seen that too. But the challenge is, guys, I just challenge you to be a little self-reflective here. If you're saying that to yourself, then it likely means you're not prepared for slow season. And it will come. The time Mm. comes for everyone at some point, right? The tides change and things happen. And that's what's out of our control. Being able to be flexible and have a dialed in process that serves us no matter what is really in our best interest there. And so recognizing again to your story, this fella clearly is not prepared for that time when the Mm. world shifts and isn't isn't, uh, equipped or patient enough to deal with that short communication and uh, Mm -hmm. do you want me to email you some prices you know what i think honestly affects a lot of this just in recent history during the times between 2019 and 2022 there was so much money being injected into our industry because Mm -hmm. people were sitting at home and they needed the lights and they needed things doing and they weren't spending money on vacations so a lot of these businesses were able to grow despite not having a process They could show up, someone had money in hand 12 months of the year and they wanted to spend it. Yeah. These new businesses need to prepare for what's coming. And the best way to do that is to have an established process that works. And that's why we want to be here. We want to keep you guys from going under. And if you're not those small companies, why not take it to the next level? Because when those people do go under, there's going to be a power vacuum. And the person who has the best process is the one who stands up on top. Absolutely. And it it seems to be the missing piece, right? Mm -hmm. And there are ways that people try to grab it like a Jenga block and say, hey, I just need to buy SOPs and put them into my Jenga um, tower. It's just not quite that simple, right? 
But what we do know, and the relieving part about process, really being something we all need to attain in order to delegate and pass this phishing test, mm -hmm. that process for a good uh, sales and service implementation in your business empowers mm -hmm. everyone the same to follow it. So even someone like yourself who identifies as, you know, being on the spectrum or having some challenges with that, mm -hmm. it empowers you. It empowers mm -hmm. other people too. Like everyone gets this even playing field to work from. And what's built into that, that process is strategic empathy. Correct. So the words and the questions are already there. So it's like insert caring moment. Now we mm -hmm. call you the sales bot and that's a bit of a joke, but it's also a huge compliment, of course. Thank you. But taking that in its most literal terms, quite often people may struggle with um, the social situation, the cues and that mm -hmm. empathetic moment. Oh yeah. By and having that thing. in the process, it's like literally insert care here. The biggest reason why I developed it the way I did was I learned from anyone who would teach me. And the thing is, is that a lot of us on the spectrum, as well as any other neurodivergence that, you know, you run into, we're all different, but there are a lot of characteristics that we share and social awkwardness is definitely one of them. I struggled with social situations. I, I mean, honestly, Clay, when we eventually get together, you're going to see I'm an, I'm an awkward dude. But the thing is, when it comes to sales and when it comes to customer service, that part can be dialed in because when you do things and you say, I know what I'm saying. I know why I'm saying it. And these are why I'm choosing these words to say instead of these words. The why empowered me. The understanding the why was the reason I was able to get over the hurdle. Because now it wasn't, well, just say these things and hope for the best. It was say this because you're trying to get this response. And then eventually you find out you didn't need objection handling training because the process eliminates the objections for you. Absolutely. So win-win, right? Yeah, I love that. I know we, we went a little off track here, but ultimately the idea is to, hey, adopt a process, build a process if you need to, or mm -hmm. buy a process, whatever your choice is, you should have that process if you ever truly want to delegate and stand back from this. And in doing so, really, there's a powerful framework that I've been using for years, and it's called learn, do, teach. Mm -hmm. Nothing solidifies like learn, do, teach. You learn something new, you do it, right? And gain expertise in it and you teach it. And you don't have to wait to teach. You can teach simultaneously, teach the mm -hmm. bits you know already because it solidifies the knowledge, it solidifies the process and it will actually aid in solidifying the muscle memory for that process as well. While mm -hmm. giving the benefits to those around you, there's no need to stand on anyone's shoulder pass judgment and shut the door in anyone's face without at least potentially taking the opportunity to pass it on. Would you say that's fair as an, as an action item even? God, I would say it's a hundred percent an action item because I mean, if you think about it, isn't that like what we're doing, you know, develop the process, did it in the field. But the thing is, is that when we're teaching it, I found that I've learned more about how I'm supposed to do what I'm supposed to do. than when someone asks me a question that's like, you know what? I didn't think of that. It's a damn good question. That's a good scenario. We should have an answer for that. Mm -hmm. And now it's one less hurdle we'll run into in the field. So I completely will subscribe to the do teach. I love it. All right. You got an all-star action for this today? So an all-star action, I would say is this. If we already know that the bare minimum is just acknowledging that you need a process, I would say the all-star action goes beyond and says, if you're going to hire someone, Hire them with the intention of saying, will this person truly serve me at the highest? Not can they do the job? Is this person prepared to serve me at the highest level? And what I'm going to ask you to do may seem a little uncomfortable or awkward, but there's a specific reason for it. The time that you have in your head, that feeling, and you all know what I'm talking about, when the contractor says something that you don't agree with, instead of nodding and thinking, I'm going to call someone else, pause and say, I understand why you're saying that, but can I offer you another way of doing it? Simply allowing them to say, you're losing me. I would like to work with you because I like you. Can we do it this way? 
when was the last time any of you were willing to educate someone on your behalf? Why not give it a shot? The only thing that'll end up happening is if nothing else, they accept it and you're able to grow and improve or they don't. And now you truly know who to disqualify. Valid points, man. Uh, huge all-star action, guys. Learn, do, teach, take action on this. As always, we're here five days a week with you to help you master sales, simplify pricing, and deliver premium level service. Today is no exception. For episode 50, we're asking you to pass that premium service along and have a greater impact in your local community. I'm Clay Newmeyer. This is Joseph Lucani. Can't wait to see you guys again. Cheers to your Until success. Then.